Okay, so that's everything taken care of and at our tail end now with our tail gearbox assembled and tail belt on our pulley up there. So what we can do is come back to our front section here and look at tensioning our tail belt. So the first thing you want to do is just double check your belt is still around your drive pulley in now, uh, which it should be. Then just come to these bolts here and, and these here on your two boom brackets and just check they're loose. The ones on this side and the ones around the other side as well, just check them. Then what we're going to do is uh, check everything's in the forward position still. Um, should all still be there from me. Uh, got a belt on our pulley at the end there. And then what you want to do is just come in um, around this side and you'll see a hole in the frames here. Well, that hole lines up with the bolt that clamps this clamp here onto this plastic sleeve. So what I'm going to do now with everything in the forward position and this clamp up against the shoulder of this plastic here, just go ahead and tighten that bolt so our clamp clamps onto our plastic there. Like that. Right, so now we've got that in position. And what we can do now is just manually pull your boom back like that. Now we just move slightly like that has. And so that's put a bit more tension on our belt. What I'm going to do now uh, to get some more tension is come to our two bolts here. What I'm going to do is just screw one in so I can feel a uh, slight resistance of it pressing up against a small metal block in the frames there. So there we go, just screw that in. I can feel that's just gone up against the block there now. What I'll do is do the same to the other one. Just screw that in. So I can feel that come up against the block there as well. Now what I want to do is just gradually screw each of these bolts in evenly. So just do a bit on that one. Come around, do a bit on this one. Like that. Uh, the reason for that is you don't want to be just screwing one of these in at a time all the way in because you're going to be putting a bending load on the boom there and everything. Uh, so you want to make sure this is even and you've got a nice even load um, on your bracket there. So I'm going to do, as I do that, I'm going to come in and check my belt tension uh, in here. Actually, that feels quite tight now as it is. So I'm going to go up the other end just turn the tail there and it feels reasonably free still. So that tension should be about right. Now it's quite hard to show um, on the video what the right tension is uh, in there. Um, I think the best analogy I've heard is you kind of want it like um, a guitar string tension. So if you imagine that and also imagine if you have a guitar string that's too loose and it's just going to flop around and uh, not do anything. And likewise, if our tail belt's too loose, it's just gonna flop around in there and slide over our pulleys and uh, you're gonna have no tail drive. But if you over tighten the guitar string, uh, it's gonna snap on you. Now this tail belt probably wouldn't do that, but if you do over tighten it, what you're gonna find is um, you drag a lot of power out of your drive system here and it's just not gonna perform as well. So the key point is not too tight, not too loose and especially on these bolts it could be easy to over tighten it if you screw those in too much so just keep checking that what we're after is again like the motor um, drive belt there a firm kind of resistance when you press it but not extremely tight okay so when you're happy with your belt tension what you can do is you can go ahead clamp up your four bolts on this side here, like that. and then come to the other side, do your other four, like this. You can do them on alternate sides if you want to, like that. And just get them nice and tight there and clamp down. And then when you've done that, uh, that'll be your belt and boom in position and with a nice belt tension to go flying with.
Okay, so now we've finished working around this area, uh, fixed on our boom in position and got our belt tensioned. Uh, before we leave here, what we can do is just come back to our gyro plate over here and refit this where we've got the opportunity. So to do that, the first thing you want to do is come to this bolt uh, here that's already been pre-installed in this metal bracket that's sandwiched between your boom clamp. Just go ahead and remove that bolt there, like that. Just put that to one side and come to your frame spacer here and just remove these bolts uh, we put in earlier. And what I found here is, although I've already uh, tightened up these bolts here around my boom clamps, I can actually slide this uh, frame spacer in between the frames there reasonably easily. Uh, before you do that though, just make sure you've got your plate around the right way at the correct orientation with uh, the hole there uh, towards the front. So I'll go ahead and do that. Slide that in between the frames like that. And then what I would recommend doing here is just getting your bolts into your frame spacer there. And just fit them loosely. And what that will allow you to do is uh, you can just rotate your gyro plate there down and it'll just line up that hole at the back there, like that. Then you can go ahead, fit your bolt back in there, just get some bolt tight on that and tighten that up. And you can come in and check those two bolts again, just tighten those up, make sure they're firm and in position there. And finally, you can uh, tighten up your frame spacer bolts, just like we did uh, before when we did them on the upper frames. So there we go, that'll be your gyro plate in position, ready to come and mount our fly bias unit later on. So now we've finished all around here, we can think about moving on to the road head. Okay, so what we can do now is come along and take a look at our main road head. So as you can see, everything's been pre-assembled for us. Uh, what you'll find is everything's still gonna be loose so what we need to do is go around, just check everything's in the right order, uh, get a thread lock on, and then retighten our bolts, and we'll be safe to go flying with it. So the first thing I recommend doing here, is just come along to these links. I can show you one or two here. Just remove, or remove this small bolt here from this link. And it's a good thing they've actually been put in position here for us. So what we can do is go ahead and do this without worrying um, about holding everything in position at the same time. So I'll just take some of my thread lock here. Let's get a bit on the end again, not too much because we want to make sure that we don't get any of the thread lock into our bearings when we come to put these bolts in. There we go. And just tighten that up. As you tighten it up, always make sure you check, make sure there's no restriction um, on your links there. Then for this one, what I'm going to do here is just take this washout arm out. What I'm going to do is just remove the whole arm uh, and get my thread lock on the bolt uh, like that. What that means is um, I'm not going to be pushing my bolt through all of this assembly with the bearings in uh, with the thread lock on. So it's just a nice thing to, to help us there. A nice little tip for you. I'll just get my thread lock on there. I can just put that whole arm back in, keeping that thread lock as far away from the bearings uh, as I can. There we go. I'll just tighten that down like that. And make sure that it's tight and no restriction there, which it is. I'm happy with that then. So what I'll do is just go around, take each one of these out, um, balls there, uh, these blade grip arms, just get everything out, get some thread lock on, and retighten it, and come back when I've done that. Okay, so that's the last of my bolts tightened up there. My blade grip arms, all my links are now tight and moving freely. So now I've done that, everything's thread locked in. We can go ahead and look at the feathering spindle, which goes through our blade grips. And the head block here. Now as you'll see um, 
its design is pretty much exactly the same as what we saw on the tail rotor earlier on. So I probably won't go into quite as much detail as I did with that. But probably the best uh, thing I can do here is I'll just go ahead, disassemble all this, and I'll just lay out the parts so you can see how it all goes together in here. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and disassembled everything off my feathering spindle there. What you'll find is the design is pretty much exactly the same as the tail rotor that we saw earlier. I have just one tiny difference, that's this spacer washer here. So you now have that on the outer side of the blade grip, as well as this one on the inside. So that's really the only difference. Everything else is just exactly the same as what you've seen before on the tail, apart from it's just that a little bit larger. Okay, so there's just a few things to do here, uh, some preparation before we go ahead and reassemble this. The first thing I would say is, uh, your feathering spindle, uh, if you came to disassemble everything and you found your bolt stuck on one side like that, then much like we did on the tail, just make sure that when you grip this, uh, you're not gripping it with anything that's as hard or harder than the steel here. Otherwise, we we'll just go around and scratch your shaft like that. That's what I did, was just return this to my trusty vise with my aluminium grips. That just allowed me to grip that nice and firmly, take my bolt out, not doing any damage to the shaft at all. Okay, so you can take a look at your thrust bearings here now. Um, exactly the same principle as before. You've got your inner part and your outer part there, and your ball bearings in the middle. And again, each one of those is labelled uh, on the back to tell you which one it is. Now these do come uh, pre-greased from the factory, uh, but what I did, and again, was just go around with my own grease, just added a bit extra there to make sure they're more lubricated. Just get some on both greaves there and in the ball bearings there. And finally, what I want to do is come to my feathering spindle here. I'm just going to grease, get a bit of grease on here, uh, just to make sure that goes into our dampers nice and freely. So go ahead and do that now, uh, just by using my finger. Just spread a nice thin film onto your feathering shaft there. That's just going to allow us to get it in there nice and easily. And one thing I would say is here, just be careful to stay away from the ends here, because what you don't want is grease going into your threads there and interfering with your thread lock. Okay, so that's everything uh, prepared now. I'm ready to go ahead and assemble this. So what I'll do is go ahead and do one side. And I'll come back and show you how I do the other side, uh, because both of these are just exactly the same. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so as you can see, um, I've gone ahead and assembled one side, my rotor head there. So what I can do now is to show you how I do the other side. Again, it's almost exactly the same method as we used on the tail rotor. So first thing I want to do is come in, just get some kitchen towel again like that. Just clean out uh, threads in my feathering spindle there. And for exactly the same reason, I just want to make sure my thread lock uh, sticks really well uh, in there. Okay, so I'll make sure that's clean. That's one side. So now we can do is go ahead and fit the rest of our parts onto here. So I'll start my washer. I'll just go with the smooth edges uh, the damper there. My blade grip. Now just be careful uh, when you come to fit your blade grips here, because uh, what you want to do is make sure you get them on the correct side and the correct orientation. But otherwise, you might find yourself in a situation where you're on the wrong side and you'll have to take your ball off here because um, you can't get the background again. So the correct way is your line logo at the top and your arms opposite each other like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and push my blade grip on there, like that. Now I can come in, I've got my spacer here, and you can just drop that down in there, like that. Now I'm just going to use my driver uh, to position everything now, and my thrust bearing. So make sure, double check you've got the inner uh, part there which I have. Let's go ahead, put that in, the groove towards me there, like that. And my ball uh, thrust brace here. Want the uh, hollow part on the inside and the flat face towards us again, like that. Just go ahead and guide that in. And finally, the outer part, my thrust bearing there, Double check that says out, which it does. Go ahead, feed that in. 
Okay, so that's everything in there. We're ready to go ahead and think about fitting our bolts. Okay, so what I can do is just come to this bolt uh, that I have left here to fit. Just give it a quick clean, a kitchen towel there. Then we're ready to go ahead and put some thread lock on this. Now again, it's just the same procedure. Just make sure you get a nice blob on the end there. But again, not too much, uh, so it gets no bearings in there. We just want a nice, nice medium sort of amount there on the end, uh, just to give us a nice uh, adhesion when we go into our feathering spindle. And like that. Okay, now what I can do is just feed that in. And just tighten it up loosely for now. We don't want to tighten that just yet. The reason for that is we want to go ahead and get our bolt at the other side now as well. So we can do that. Just take your bolt out the other side, just do exactly the same thing. We're just gonna get some thread lock on the end of this. I'm just going to push that into there, just tighten that up loosely. What you can do is get your two drivers now, just get them, there we go, to roughly that point, and then just tighten them up like that. Nice and tight again, just like we did the tail. I don't want to go crazy uh, and launch it up so hard that you crush your bearings in there, but we want to go nice and tight. So as you can imagine, when we have our blades on and it's spinning fast, there's going to be a lot of load trying to pull our blade grips apart there. There we go. That's nice and tight there. So I'm happy with that. Everything's moving freely still. And there you have it. There's your rotor head. Everything's been tightened and thread locked. We're ready to move on to the next stage. Okay, so that's our rotor head uh, prepared there. So what we can do now is come over here and look at our swash plate. Now, dealing with this is probably going to be one of the easiest things we do in this whole assembly. So all we've got to do is come to our balls here, just Take out each one, put a bit of your blue thread lock on the end there, like that, just a small amount. Screw it back in and tighten it up, just like that. There we go, and just go around each one of your balls there, doing exactly the same. Then if you like, you can come to these three small bolts on the back and just check these are tight as well, which they are on mine. So there we go, that's our swash plate prepared. Then what I'll do is just stick my blade bolts back in my blade grips there, ready for when I'm coming to fit my main blades later on. So there we go, we can now go ahead and think about fitting a main shaft. Okay, so what we can do now is look at fitting our main shaft uh, into our frames there, uh, along with our main gear. As you can see, I've gone ahead and got those parts here. And if you remember, uh, when we first got our main shaft out and used it to set our upper frame positions, uh, we put this washer to one side. Uh, well, now's the time you want to be thinking about bringing this back in. Uh, so what I did was just went ahead and I actually fitted my main shaft along with my main gear. I uh, put the bolt. Uh, through the main shaft there and the main gear uh, without the washer in. And I just checked to see how much uh, up and down movement I had um, on the main shaft. Now if you find you don't have any then you won't need to fit this washer. But what I found is I had a slight up and down movement there. Um, so what I want to do is use this washer and that should just help um, get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is put this washer now onto my main shaft 
and it's going to go under the collar there, like that. Okay, so what we could do now is go ahead and fit our main gear. So what I want to do is just remove the bolt from there, and like that, just put that to one side, and uh, make sure the nut stays in there though, ready for when we come to fit it later on. Then what I found is you want to put your main gear in from this side, uh, because on this side you're actually um, obstructed by your tail belt tensioner there. So you want to go around this side and also um, this orientation. So this is going to be at the top like that. So I'm just going to slot that in roughly into position and try and get the hole uh, that you're going to put the bolt through um, in a good position lined up with where you are uh, to begin with. That makes things a bit easier. And just slot your gear in there. Try and get it in roughly the right position and um, under the main shaft hole in there. And then when you've done that, just go ahead, put your main shaft in. Just make sure you've got it the right way around. And um, this smaller tab at the bottom there. As you can see, I've got my washer under my collar there. I'm just going to slot my main shaft in. And hopefully it should all line up. And just drop in through my main gear there. Like that. Okay, so that's my main shaft in position there. So what I'm going to do now is turn this around and probably show you. Uh, we're going to line up the hole in our main shaft with the hole in our main gear there. So what you want to do is make sure your main shaft is all the way down and your gear is pressed all the way up. Like that. What you're going to do is just turn your main shaft so your holes line up. Looks like I've got that there. And if you'd like, you can also put a driver through the hole there, there just to make sure everything's lined up. Uh, if you do that, though, just be careful that you don't knock your nut out from the other side there. Okay, so what I can do is just get my bolt here, come down to my hole, and theory, I should just push it through like that. And then the locking nut that we've got in the gear there will just take care of everything for us. Don't need any lock tight or anything. Just go ahead and tighten that bolt up. There like that. And that should be fine. As you can see now, um, if I come in here, there's no up and down movement on my main shaft. Everything's in nice and solidly. So there we go, that's our main gear and main shaft fitted. Okay, so that's my main shaft and main gear fitted in there. So what I've done now is just brought back my main rotor head and swash plate that we already prepared. What we could do now is think about fitting these onto our main shaft. So the first thing here, the key point is, make sure you put your swash plate on first. All that does is just slot down over your main shaft uh, like that. And we can just leave that like that for now. Then we come to our main rotor head, uh, just Remove the two bolts that are already in there and take the nuts out as well just so they don't fall out when you're trying to put it on. And these are exactly the same principle as uh, we saw on the main gear. So you just have your bolt going through there with your nylon locking nut on the back uh, just housed in those recesses there and around there. Right, so what we can do is just fit our head block onto our main shafts. Uh, but the key point is here, when you come to do this, make sure your arms here are in the correct position, uh, like that. Because if you do put it on the wrong way, um, you'll find that you can't get them back around again, and you'll have to remove um, this link here in order to get them back to the right position. So, it's just a tip for you there. That's correct then. I'm just going to Push my head block down to my main shaft, like that. And what you'll find is, uh, if you go all the way down, uh, you've probably gone too far. So you're just gonna have to bring it up just to line up your holes. And just get it in the right position. Ready for me, can line everything up there. And just pull it up. There we go. And that's lined up, actually, for me now. And what we can do is you can put a driver through again 
Uh, just make sure everything's lined up there. There we go. I can turn it to the correct position I want it in. And go ahead and start fitting my bolts. Okay, so that's the last of my two head block bolts tightened up there now. And if you look at this uh, bottom area here of your head block, you can actually see a, uh, a slot that's been cut there at the bottom. And what that does is, is when you tighten up your bottom bolt here, it just allows the head block to kind of squeeze together and clamp onto your main shaft there. So that's just a rough idea of how that works. So let's go around, check. Both my head block bolts are tight, which they are. So that's now our rotor head and swash plate fitted onto our main shaft there, like that. We're now ready to go ahead and think about fitting some links. Okay, so what we can do now is come in here, think about fitting some links to our main rotor and swash plate. So to begin with, uh, I can show you around here, is so we'll just attach these washer arm links here and onto our swash plate. So we're just gonna go onto the bore there, that's sticking out inside of the swash plate there. Uh, if you try to put it on these other ones, uh, they're on the arm there, uh, you won't get the one anyway, because they're around at 90 degrees. So there we go, just go and get those on. I should actually push on reasonably easily. That. So I'll just go ahead and do these now and get that one on there like that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is come to our linkages down here. Uh, and as you can see, they've all come pre assembled at the factory for us, uh, so we don't have to screw our links onto our linkage rods anymore there, which is a nice little feature. And as you can see, we have two different lengths here, so these two are the same length as each other and these three are the same length as each other as well. Now I checked each of the sizes uh, for the two sets here, and they're approximately what the manual says. So I'll just go ahead and leave them like that um, until I come to do my setup later on. Now the first thing to note when fitting these, um, so there's a groove in the hexagonal section on one side. When you fit these, you want that to be at the top of your linkage rod. Now the reason for this uh, being is it's an opposite thread uh, on each end. So it's been designed to allow you to adjust uh, your rod length without taking them off and turning one link individually. So you can just turn your hexagonal section there, um, some grips, and change your linkage length uh, nice and easy. And you have this groove on the top, uh, it means that it works in a logical way. So turning your rod clockwise uh, will shorten the link, and anti-clockwise will lengthen it. Now it will still work uh, if you put it on the other way around, um, if you have the groove on the bottom. Uh, but then when you turn the linkage clockwise, it's going to loosen it and anti-clockwise, it's going to tighten it. So it's just nice to have it around that way so it's intuitive to use later on. And secondly, um, if you look at the links, uh, the black plastic here, you actually have an A moulded into the plastic and on one side and the hole is smaller. On the other side, there's no A and the hole is larger. And that's the way you want to push it onto the balls there, that way. So whenever you can, just make sure they're around that way um, with a larger hole going onto your ball there, and that'll make things a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead, fit these. Uh, the larger ones are going to go on the top here, uh, from my blade grip arm here, down to the remaining balls on the swash plate, and these three Smaller ones are going to go on these outer balls, my swash plate on there, like that. Now at this point, what I'd say is, I'm going to get them on the swash plate, but I'm not going to get anything onto my servos yet. I'm just going to wait till I come to do my setup. I've got my neutral position set, my surf arms in position and tightened up nicely uh, before I fit these arms onto the servo arms there. And then the final point I'd make is, um, I have some ball link pliers here, which can make the process easier. Um, you find these stiff to push on. Um, they're nice to have. And I'll just show you um, how they work. 
just get a link around the right way. Just push that on there. Then you just come in with your ball link pliers. Uh, hopefully you can see this. Just like that. And it will just press on easily like that. There we go. So what I'm gonna do now is just go around, fit all these links onto my swash plate and rotate right there. Okay, so that's all our links there, put onto our uh, rotor head there and our swash plate, as you can see. And that's all now ready uh, for us to come along later on and do our setup. So what we can do now is just go ahead and take a quick look at our servo push rod here. Now, first thing to say is uh, screw these links on at the end. And um, obviously you're gonna change the length when it comes to your setup later on. Uh, just make sure that there's enough thread uh, gone into each one of these links at the end here because uh, you don't want to be in a situation where uh, either of those could come off um, later on. Uh, so the next thing you want to look at is the sleeve here. Now you see it's just loose uh, on the rod there. So we've come all this way and uh, we've now reached the point where we need to bring in our super glue. And what we're going to do is put a small amount of super glue um, on the carbon rod there. What I'm going to do is just slide that over it and just stick this on in a position that's just roughly off center, like that. And if you remember the, um, the push rod guide, we've slid over our boom uh, earlier on. I'll just take it off again and show you this now. So the principle is this rod is just going to go through our guide there. And that sleeve there, you can position um, this clamp on your boom just so that operates um, through the guide like that. So this will be glued on, your sleeve will be glued on, and you can just move this clamp up and down your boom just to get the right position over that. That's all you have to do. Just a very simple process there. So I'll go ahead and do that, and that'll be my rod uh, fitted on. Okay, so I've gone ahead and fitted my tail servo push rod there. I'll just mention a few things about that uh, before we move on. The first is, if you happen to have your rudder servo arm on, then I wouldn't recommend connecting your rod at both ends just yet, purely because um, when it comes to turning your radio on, and if you haven't set your travel limits uh, for your rudder, then you could end up binding your linkage um, on one of both sides when you turn your radio on. So just bear that in mind. And also, you're gonna to want to set the length anyway um, of the rod, so it's better to just have it disconnected for now, ready for that setup. And secondly, when you come to put your push rod guide clamp in position on the boom, just make sure that the rod is running uh, straight in the guide and you're not putting any twisting load on the rod with the clamp. The best way to do that, uh, just look down the boom and quickly see if the rod is running straight. Okay, so with that, all we can do is come to our final part here, our swash plate guide. And all we're gonna do is come in here to our elevator servo, just remove these two bolts here from the back those to one side. What I'm going to do is fit our swash plate guide bracket there on the back like that. That orientation, as you can see, the align logo is at the back there. So just go ahead and fit that on there like that. But at the same time, just make sure that you get your elevator um, rod here coming from your swash plate into the groove there like that. And as you can see, this is why um, we left this to this stage um, because can't get our elevator link um, on there. We can't get that on um, with our swash plate guide on. So what we've got to do now is just get some thread lock on our bolts, put them in there, tighten them up, and then that'll be us finished for that stage. When we've done that, we can think about moving ahead and fitting some electrical parts and doing our wiring. Okay, so that's all our parts there now, um, pretty much assembled. So what we can do uh, next is come and look at some electrical equipment. And the first thing I'm gonna do is look at my speed controller. Now, this is one I've actually used before. And as you can see, it's a BL-130 amp, uh, as we saw at the beginning. Um, I've already got my connectors uh, on the end there. And um, just bear in mind, if you're having a new one of these, uh, then you're gonna to wanna to get these connectors on 
um, whichever ones you're using um, to suit um, your main flight pack uh, batteries. Just get them on now before you go and put this in. So for me, I'm okay to just go ahead and do this. And the orientation I'm gonna use is gonna be the motor wires um, towards the motor here. My battery wires are gonna come out the front and connect with my battery um, like that. So let's go ahead and mount that roughly in the position I want, which is gonna be about there. Okay, what I'm gonna do is um, just get that signal wire out of the way. We can then feed our motor wires here down uh, by the size of our radio tray underneath to meet up with the motor wires uh, that we fed down under there earlier on when we put our motor in. So we go ahead and do that. Just feed them roughly down under there. Then what we're going to want to do uh, when we've done this is come in and connect our three motor wires um, under in the frames there. Uh, so I can just show you that. And then you can see this might be um, quite fiddly um, to get in there. And it's at this point that we're glad um, we fired our frames uh, when we began um, because we're going to be working around um, this opening here quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is just push uh, the connectors together there, like that. Um, and if you do find it tricky to reach in there, um, you just get some grips like that or some needle nose pliers like that and just um, use that to hold one of the wires and then you should be able to get in there and push it in. Uh, the one thing I'd say about doing that is though, um, when you can, just try and grip uh, the case of the connector uh, rather than the actual wire. That just um, prevents any damage happening there. Right, so what I can do is go ahead, connect the rest of my motor wires, then we can come back and look at how we're gonna route um, our servo wires here and our speed controller signal wire um, to the back to meet up with our fly wireless unit. Right, so I've now connected my uh, motor wires uh, to my speed controller there. And I can show you that in there. I'm not sure whether you can see that, but they're all in there. Uh, the one thing I found here actually is um, if you are struggling um, to connect them just without taking anything off here, and just getting your fingers in there, what you can do is and remove uh, these two bolts here of your radio tray and the same on the other side. Just take them out and then just loosen these front ones. What you find is the whole um, radio tray will actually hinge up uh, like a bonnet there. And it will just allow you to get nice and easily um, to your wires. Uh, so it's a bit, a bit more inconvenient um, having to do that, take your bolts out. But if you find it difficult fiddling around in there, uh, in the long run, and um, it's probably going to be quicker doing it that way. Then just, um, we've done that, just go ahead, refit your bolts uh, as we did at the beginning, with a bit of thread lock on there. And make sure they're nice and tight again. Okay, so that's that. So what I'm going to do now is come on and look at my wiring for my servos, my speed controller signal wire here. Now the idea is, we're just going to get everything um, on hopefully on the inside of the frames and just get it rooted uh, to the back here to meet up with our fly wireless unit. Now what I'm actually going to do is um, a line have provided a nice uh, diagram and a video uh, as well which I can put a link to uh, in the description. What I'm going to do is just follow that and it should then just allow me to get all my wires um, in the right position nice and neatly and uh, without too much trouble. So rather than watching me uh, fiddle around with um, cable ties for the next little while, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and do that. I'll come back and I'll show you the result and give you any tips um, that I find might be useful to you um, along the way. Okay, so I've gone ahead and followed the wiring diagram that the line provided. And as you can see, um, now all the wires are nicely hidden um, inside our frames there. I will say that this is quite a fiddly process to do. So the first thing I'd recommend to you is to make sure you have some of these uh, needle nose pliers to hand, just so you can get around the back and into some of the tighter areas uh, to get your cable ties pushed back through the holes again. Then the next thing to say, um, we'll be using the thinnest uh, cable ties that come in the bag where you can. And the main reason for this is the fact that the upper holes on top there, uh, they're partly obscured by the bearing block frame. 
So if you try to get anything bigger in there, uh, you'll find it very difficult to get them through. And they also fit uh, through the other holes more easily as well. So it's just more convenient to use the smaller ones. And uh, then when you do come to install them, I recommend probably just getting your wires through uh, in roughly the right positions first, then fitting your cable ties around them. Uh, and also, um, if you just put a bend on your cable ties, uh, like this, before you push them through, just like a hook in the end there, uh, then you'll find it's just easier to get back into your hole uh, from the other side. So I managed to follow the diagram almost exactly. Uh, there were a few exceptions. The first was up here. So the second set of holes along the top uh, from the servo, I found it was just impossible for me to get the cable tie back through from the other side uh, because of the belt. So what I did was simply use the lower hole and then the outer edge of the frames there. And I also used exactly the same principle uh, around the other side with my speed controller signal wire. Uh, since I have both that and a telemetry wire passing close to the main gear, I just used the upper hole uh, of that and the edge of the hole and the frames again, which just allowed the wires to move further away uh, from the main gear there. Okay, so I think that's about it for the wiring there. As you can see, I've got all my connectors nicely coming up at the back there, ready to fit my fly bias unit. And for me, that's going to be a Cardo uh, Viva Neo, which I have there. I'll just be using that along with the V Control Touch transmitter, which I've got there. So what I'll do is simply get some gyro tape, get it on the back of my uh, fly bias unit here. I'll plug my wires in and then stick it down on the plate there. Uh, make sure it's parallel to the frames and lined up, just like that. One point I can give you here uh, when it comes to connect yours is that this servo here, uh, the elevator, at least on the Neo here, um, is channel one. Then this servo on the left at the front here is channel two, and that one on the right is channel three. Okay, so I'll go ahead and fit my flow bonus unit on there. And that will pretty much be it for our electrical equipment. Okay, so there we go. I've got my Neo um, stuck on there. I've got my wires connected uh, reasonably neatly. So what I need to do now is stick my nice little aerial holder here down. So I've just gone ahead and stuck some gyro tape under there. And what I do now is just peel that off and stick that down into position about there. Like that. Okay, there we go. And if you wanted to at this point, you could also come back to your speed controller and uh, strap a few cable ties around that. Uh, you just uh, join two together and just strap that around your uh, radio track the front there. Just some extra peace of mind that that's going to stay secure. Okay, so um, with that, that's all our electronics uh, completely finished. Right, so now we've got our electronics done. Um, that's pretty much it for our entire assembly there. There's just a few little things I want to show you uh, before we leave it there. Uh, the first is, uh, you can probably see, I've already gone ahead and fitted my blades here. It's a very simple process. Uh, the only thing you want to be aware of is just uh, the tension. and trying to get the right tension on there. Uh, it's just a case of not getting them too tight, not getting them too loose. As you can see on mine here, I can move them. When I let go, they stay where they are. Like that. There's no flapping around uh, or anything like that. The idea being, uh, we want them to be able to find uh, their own position once they're rotating. They're not so loose that they flop around and cause a boom strike or something and when they're slowing down or speeding up. And it's exactly the same principle on the tail blades there. I've gone ahead and fitted those as well. Again, not too tight, not too loose. Um, not so tight that they're stuck in one position not so loose uh, flopping around and might stay where they are either. And one other way you could try this um, on your main blades here, if you check the model on its side, um, and the blades shouldn't be able to fall under their own weight. Um, if they do, then you know you've got them too loose. Okay, so secondly, um, I want to show you the battery here. And this is my flight battery. Now I'm gonna be using the Mania X 80C 
5200 milliamp per hour, uh, the orange ones there. When it comes to positioning it on your battery tray, what you can do is just slot it in there and at the front there, just goes in under your frames. And slot it in, get your canopy on and just check your CG position. And the way you can do that is just tip the model um, on its side like that and just hold it by the right head and you'll see it will either pivot one way like that or the other uh, unless your CG is um, already perfect um, and that will tell you which way you need to move your battery in order to balance it. So then you can go ahead and just shift your batteries um, either a bit further forward or backwards uh, on your tray here and that will help you get your CG position correct uh, ready for when you come to go fly. So there we go, there's a few little things just to end there with and now I think we can finally declare our assembly finished. Right, so there we have the Align TP70 uh, fully assembled, ready to go ahead and set up your speed controller and whatever flyglass unit radio you want to put in there. Now unfortunately I haven't had time to cover the setup procedure in this video, uh, but the Align manual does have some useful information on that, and so too will your speed controller and flyglass unit manuals uh, as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video, I uh, found it useful, at least to some extent. I tried to include as much as I could in the time I had, make it relevant uh, whether you've assembled hundreds of these things before or is this going to be one of your first ones and hopefully uh, we'll be back soon with a video of this doing some 3d flying so until then thanks for watching